So you want to be a champion? Now they're going to go a little wider. Prince Ball back for Marshall. The footwork, the footwork. Benji Marshall. Now the speed. The footwork again. Away from Pesci. Passes without looking. Away for Richards. Back to Fitz Henry. That is as good as you will see. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gents, to another episode of the Supercoach Tragics podcast. I'm your host, Dan. Um, to, with us tonight, we have a returning guest, uh, Mr. SC Whisperer. Uh, welcome back, mate. Thanks for coming on. No worries, boys. Always good to come on. Thank you for having me. And um, last time um, we spoke, you were pretty highly ranked. How's that going? Uh, I, I can't remember exactly where I was last time we spoke, but uh, I think we've just sort of been in steady ground. We're in 210th at the moment. Uh, um, mm. With very much an eye on our final side, which should be finalised in probably the next two weeks, which is, which is nice. It's always good to have a little bit of depth. I guess these cash cows that you invested in early have started to pay off to be able to have the the depth to be able to move forward. Yeah, especially this time of the year with the the, the lack of trades as well. The depth is probably key at the moment. So, um, how are you going for trades? You're you're running thin or? Uh, yeah, running very thin, but very happy with the side that we have. I think bef- after making three trades this week, we're going to have seven left. Mm-hmm. And I've got three players in mind that I want to have for the run home. Um, and I might be able to do those in three moves. So if we can have four trades from round 19 to 24, um, just to cover for injuries or whatever, I think that'll be fine with the with the depth that we have. Like in my final side, for example, like we'll touch on trades later on today, mm-hmm. but I've got guys like Max King, Isaac Tago, Talon May, all just sort of sitting there and then I'm playing reserve. So I guess a good amount of depth there for my final 17. Yeah. yeah well, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm in like a different, but I actually have uh, 14 trades left pre uh, this round. However, I still need seven players to get, to get my final team. So in the end, I'm going to have the same kind of four trades left for injuries. So um, yeah, perhaps me should, perhaps my last few years of burning trades early um, should have been uh, used this year as well. So <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. We've got uh, Glenn with us tonight again. Glenn, mate, how was you go last week, mate? Oh, mate, I, I, I've got a new strategy. I'm leaving my players on the bench to see if they can match <laughs> <for> my team. <laughs> I have 435 points on the bench. Yeah, I got 1,045. I dropped nearly 2K. I was a bit shattered by that. So I'm back up to 7, 8, 8K. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm an unhappy camper, but I'm very happy with my team. I had 15 this week until I lost two. And um, and I'm expecting more. It's just the way this season's gone. Yeah, well, um, my, I've been, had a pretty terrible year all year, but this is uh, it's all led up to this one moment. Um, I've got 17 players this week, um, and not all of them are great. I just I didn't trade any crap ones, you know. I just kept the ones that were just sitting there doing nothing for ages, and I'm going to have probably a couple of uh, no, uh, dodgy players in there that I'll get rid of, like Leo Thompson. So I'll get a nice little even 19 points out of him. Um, but I won't be trading him out. So in saying that, I've got about 14 players that are genuinely looking at a decent score this week. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, all righty. Let's uh, move on to our first section. Uh, we're going to talk about trade-ins and trade-outs for the week. So we'll start with uh, no surprises here. Number one, I'll go with you, uh, Whisperer. Uh, number one traded in is Puppy. Little Puppy. No brainer. No, I don't. Uh, I feel like us in the super coach space, we, we try and like think too, too far outside the box and try and be the smartest guy in the room. But uh, I mean, ideally he, he dropped 200 K from last week to this week, but we, we didn't get that luxury. So we're going to have to pay top dollar for him, but we just, we're seeing what he can do in 10 minutes. So a guy that you really want to have for, for the run home. And I guess it just compares to, I guess we can segue into it. Number two in the list. I, I'm sure a lot of people are debating whether we go Pappenhausen or Latrell Mitchell. Um, I can see a world where you run both. I can't see a world where you do run Latrell over Pap. Um, as sort of your, your primary fullback. I think it, it's a big pod move and yeah, he is up for it in the big games, but South draw, I mean, we, we spoke about it before we recorded, like South don't have the, the best draw coming home at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's no, a bit scary. Uh, in saying that, I am trying to be the smartest person in the room because I've got nothing to lose where I'm ranked. So um, I can bring Pappy in. Um, I've had a little look at previous, um, uh, the, the last game they played and Pappy got 67 against the Sharks last time they played. Um, so I have a gut feeling. This is my gut feeling, and I don't recommend this to anyone. My gut feeling is Latrell outscores Puppy this week. However, doing this trade actually frees up enough cash for me to go Kennedy to Puppy next week. Um, so I will have Latrell and Puppy in next week. So yeah, I'm right. going to be death riding the crap out of Puppy tomorrow night. But it's just a gut feeling that I had. I reckon Latrell scores more than him this week. That's my feel. 
So yeah, I, I, he's got he's got a much better matchup, um, and mm-hmm. I think it's a case of what your team needs as well. Like if you've given up on overall and you're strictly going uh, head to head and, and you need that pod, um, then obviously yeah, all aboard the trail train. But I guess in, in my situation, um, I yeah. need to have Pappenhausen, so he's a guy that I'm, I'm prioritizing this week as a must. Yeah, Glenn. Yeah, I, I want to play devil's advocate here. I mean, I, I can see a scenario where I, I can get Paps and I can get Latch that now uh, Hines is out. But I didn't like what I saw from Melbourne as a whole last week. And um, I, I thought that they got lucky. I mean, Manly took four players off who were pretty, you know, Jerbo, Ola Kawatu, uh, 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 Marty Power, I can't remember who the other one was. And then for that last five minutes, so it was frustrating as an on-owner as that happened. Um but I, I can see a world where Lat scores well, and I kind of think he's not uh, non matchup specific. So the fact that he draws hard, I don't think such is a big deal for Latrell. Mm. Um, having said that, I'm not doing it. I'm just getting Pappenhausen, and I'm going to bring in Tedesco next week. Yeah, no, I'm I'm also in the Teddy train, uh, Teddy over Trell, just the sheer fact that like. I think they both, and I said this on, on uh, my pod, the Dual Position podcast, I, I think they both have the same ceiling of about 150, 160, but the floor is just much more drastic. Latrell's going to go for 15 points where yeah. Teddy probably will get your 40, like worse off. So that's the way I'm looking at it. Pat, um, I'm happy to give Melbourne a pass mark from last week. No Munster, Grant in the middle of origin. Uh, and obviously Pappenhaus in his first game back very slow for the first 70 minutes. So hopefully we see a bounce back without Nico Hines for the Sharks uh, for Melbourne this week. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, um, we'll move on to the next one, but we'll talk more in detail in our next section after this. Um, but uh, number two traded in is actually Pole from the Tigers at the moment. Um, well, I can see why people are doing it. I get that. There's a few other choices out there as well. So we will discuss a bit, that a bit more later. So I'll move to number three. Um, and Glenn, so Latrell Mitchell is number three traded in this week. Uh, we've already kind of discussed that, but uh, any other thoughts you want to add? Yeah, no, I think it's a good pod play. I think it's a good shirt tone play. I would just say to people or caution people, if you're selling Hind, and you're low on trade, you're going to want Hines back. You know what I mean? Mm. And there's other players I'm sure you don't have, like Grant, Tedesco, whoever that may be. So just be sensible, you know, like um, it's, uh, rather than a short-term gain, go for the long-term, the long-term gain. Yeah. Well, I'll discuss it a bit later. Uh, we were talking a bit before the recording started that um, I'm going Nico Hines to the trail, um, and I am not bringing... Um, the Nico Hines back straight away. I'm actually going to go to DCE as my pod, uh, and that's because, like I said, I said to the Whisperer before this started that um, I'm so far behind. If everyone owns Hines, if he scores really well, that doesn't help me in the slightest. Yeah. So I need to go someone a bit different. So, and if I go a bit further back from what I am now, what's the difference between fifty thousand and thirty nine thousand? To me, nothing. It's trying to get to that top fifteen thousand that make me. I don't even really focus on overall, but because I'm doing this pod every week, I'm hearing everyone's ranks that are a bit higher. I feel left out. So um, I kind of, even though I'm all focused on head to head, I feel want to have that back in my mind <clears> to kind of creep up a bit higher still. Um, all right, I'll go to the Whisperer. This one is a bit of a shock to me. Number four, most traded in this week is Brandon Smith. Uh, I think it's a bit weird. Your thoughts? Oh, I, I, I don't get this. I don't get uh, another Melbourne Storm player on this list as well, further down. Like, I just, I don't understand it. I mean, Cheese has been given plenty of opportunities this year and his Supercoach game is just nowhere near what it was last year. Like, he was so electric from hooker, so good in attack. Yeah, you're going to get him a hooker this week, awesome. But Harry Grant comes straight back in. And my sort of philosophy is, like, if you're paying 350, 400K for a guy, like, are you prepared to run with him? And I use the exact same analogy um, yesterday. I was saying, like, if you're coming into your grand final, your cash league, and you're looking for a reserve, are you happy to put it on Brandon Smith? And for me, I'm not. Uh, and that's why I'm just against it. Like, yeah, you're going to get one week of hooker out of him, then Grant comes back in and, and Cheese just goes back to what he was doing. There's a reason why Brandon Smith is as cheap as he is, uh, and it's because of simply his poor performance this year. Yeah, I think um, there's two aspects to this as to why people are bringing him in because he got a decent score last week and he's playing the buy around. That is it. It's a bit chasing points and getting an extra number, which I think you get an extra number for a lot cheaper. Um, it's a one and done um, that you can talk about a bit later as well. Yeah, like if you if you look at some like, and we'll touch on them today, like if you look at like a Jed Cartwright or you look at like a Hoskins, they might get you 35, 40 and they'll get you it for 200K. Whereas the cheese might get you 55, 60, but he's right. 200K more. Is, is 10 points really worth 200K? And I don't think it is. That's right. 
All right. So on the next one here as well, Glenn, um, Jed Cartwright, like we said, we'll talk about him a bit more later. He's another one of those one and dones, hopefully, that we can get in. So I'll move on to the next one. And that's oh, another one that's a bit confusing, bringing him in this week, and that's Tass. Um, yeah, nah. If you already have, well, look, Tass's job security has just improved. So yeah. look, I, I can understand people getting Tass. He's play, if he's playing on the left hand side, uh, outside Cody Walker, I don't hate the Tass buy, especially if you're using that trade to uh, use to, to generate cash to do another trade. So I don't hate that one as much as I hate the Brandon Smith one. Uh, I think the Brandon Smith one is short term, possibly 50 points, long term, 30 points, you know, like. I just don't like that at all. But I, do, I think Tass is actually not a bad buy. Yeah, and Tass, uh, he'll play the 80 if he's in. Uh, if he if he doesn't, if you get, if say, if um, Campbell Graham comes back a bit earlier and he gets dropped out altogether, he's no longer an AE nightmare either. So with Brennan Smith, he's always going to be on the bench there getting your smaller scores. So Can I just say one more thing. I would not be buying him if you're just buying him for a player this round. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I would, you know, a lot of us got lucky and we got Tass early. So I already own Tass. But I don't think I would be jumping on. But having said that, I do like the position of him. I don't like the south draw. So, mm. yeah, totally. Yeah, I I love Tass, but yeah. I love Tass if you own him. I don't love going out and spending 300k and a trade on him. He could be an ideal six center wing for your run home, but like, are you going to get him there? Like, if Campbell Graham's only out for four to six weeks, he's going to come back in before your final starts, and then that's just another headache that you have to move out because you want to try and have your best side possible. And Tass is just going to hold up a bench spot, and by that t- by that stage, he could be 450k, and that's kind of an awkward price to sell from. You're going to have to find your cash to generate up, or you're going to have to go all the way down to enough, and then use another trade to upgrade elsewhere. So it's kind of two trades, uh, actually three trades: one to bring him in, and probably two to take him out, moving down the line. So it's three trades just to get a, a guy in for this week. I'm I'm not keen on it. A guy that we know can score quite low on on his day, and with his draw coming up, then it's it's a high possibility he scores quite low. So. I will say, Tass has got a super coach friendly game, but yeah. as you just pointed out, I think trades are at an all time minimal at the moment, and the only trades that I'm looking at are either to generate cash or to bring in keepers. I'm yeah. not looking at someone that's for short term gain. Yep, hundred percent. All right, moving on to number seven, we'll go to the Whisperer. Um, AJ, Alex Johnson uh, for Rabbitohs. Um, I, I like his ceiling, but I'm not sure about bringing him in. I'd rather just buy Tass. Like, if, you, yeah. if, if you're considering AJ, I'd rather just buy Tass for 300k cheaper. And um, I'm sure this may change, but obviously the injury cloud that he's under, obviously suffering that uh, quad injury today, a little bit up in the air. So uh, at time of recording, he is... Yeah, on the list, but expect him maybe to drop out if the, the news is confirmed that he might miss. But look, yeah, the ceiling's cool, but I'd much rather just buy Tass, to be honest. Like, if, you, if we're going to try and try and take someone from the south left edge, uh, I'd take the cheaper guy who probably has a better better floor, but probably a smaller ceiling. Yeah. And um, that video that we saw released today um, with AJ running, um, it got a lot of everyone, people excited about, oh, he's healthy, he's fit, he's fit. He was running in a straight line. Yeah. Um, so it's not like he was doing those lateral movements as well. So it's definitely nothing to take home. All right, Glenn, number eight on the list, mate. Um, offer offering Gowie. Um, I'm liking him a lot, actually. Well, I I, I really do like offering Gowie, but then then again, I'm thinking to myself, what most people have got iPad, Lolo, Ming. I mean, what are, are they selling Ming to do it? I just again, I think it's a short term gain um, play. I, I, if I'm wasting trades now, it's in ceiling position centre wing, half, full back or second row. But look, uh, I mean, there seems to be a lot of front row movement. You know, people buying mm-hmm. Tarpany, buying Pole, buying, um, there's heaps of it. And uh, for me, I mean, go for it, guys. Waste your trade so I can buy the ceiling players. Mm. Yeah, and like you touched on it in our chats in the week. This is the time of the year, the end of the year, when the centres and yeah. the wingers and the, um, even the second rowers start to hit their stride. Um, you start to see those, centers that might be getting 80s now hitting the 120s so and, look yeah so and with the new rules to super coach this year you'll notice that halves are scoring a lot better they're getting the the, the fullbacks and the uh, halves are getting the um slide plays you know the play a lot of the plays are getting paid to those positions so you want to make sure you've got four genuine gun um halves two genuine fullbacks and and yeah i'd be looking at the six five and six seven wings now yeah definitely all righty, we'll move on to number nine, most traded in. Um, yes, I, I like this guy a lot, but there is a few question marks about him. That's Maddo. So, Whisperer, thoughts on bringing in Maddo this week? Yeah, Maddo has had some stocks risen the last couple of days. Yesterday, he was 10th, um, now moving up a little bit. But, like, 
the, the NRL physio made some good points about rib cartilage injuries. We've seen how much they affected Fafita last year, for example. Um, and there was definitely issues with him after suffering the same issue in the All-Stars game at the start of the year. Uh, I'm a matter owner, so I'm not fast. Like, I'm not worried about selling him, but you are paying top dollar for him. I think ideally a lot of people would have preferred for him to play last week and lost a bit of cash. And then you can pick him up on the cheap this week. But in saying that, I mean, he is... I mean, Brew and I were ranking our sort of top five two RFs for the run home. And I still think Maddo's probably in that top five. Mm. Um, he's now playing sort of a lock role rather than a, a roaming middle, and depending on how they're going to use him starting compared to coming off the bench. Coming off the bench, he was able to be a lot more free and, and offload the ball at will and, and definitely rack up that base power. So it will be interesting. I probably would like to wait a week this week and then see what he's doing. I know that he's playing the bye, which is awesome, but I would just prefer to wait a week and then see how he comes back from the ribs. And yeah, uh, before I'd be jumping at a top dollar. Yeah, I haven't got him this week. And I'm, I've got my plans for this week was to get more ceiling players. And I do like Maddo, but I just, uh, he's got a history of being out for longer than expected. I know it's with concussion mainly, but uh, I think there was just too many question marks about bringing him in this week. Although I do want him in my team eventually, so. Uh, all right, final line here there. I'll say the best for last. This is like my favorite one because I laughed so hard when I saw it. Uh, number 10 most traded in player this week is Nelson Asafa Solomon. Why? <laughs> I, thought I, I thought you'd like that one, Glenn. <laughs> I didn't even know that one. So <laughs> that's a pleasant surprise. Go for it, guys. Get on yeah. that. Yeah, we're talking about front rowers now. Good they are. Yeah, that's great. Honestly, I honestly don't. No, like <laughs> I'm all for a really rogue trade. I'm all for someone giving me a big spiel about why. I mean, hell, I made a Twitter post eight weeks ago <laughs> and it was like six pages long as to why I like Adam Elliott. But like, I'm not listening to any Nelson Asper Solomona chat. I don't <laughs> like, yeah, he scored a try last week, but looking at his stats, he's scored over 70 twice this year. Mm. They've both been with tries. Um, he's playing revolting minutes and he just doesn't have the work rate. So there's a reason, same thing with cheese. There's a reason why he's so cheap. Please, please don't buy him, honestly. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I, from an NRL perspective, I love when he's on the field because he really opens that Storm's attack up with that forward power. But he, he doesn't do much for super coach points at all. And yeah, no, it's a bit of a scare there. So. I just say something too. Um, a lot of people look at their team and they're thinking, okay, I've got a hooker. I've only got one front row. I've got I've got all these other positions full, but the position that's missing in my 13, because that's what number most will have is between 10 and 13, is that front rower. Mate, I'd rather buy an extra centre wing, an extra half or an extra fullback Mm. Um, than wasting myself around the front row position. Because, yeah. I mean, the chance of them getting over 100 is very remote. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one, one thing I will say as well on something similar to that is um, I, when, when Nick Hines was uh, playing this week, I did my trades and I worked out that I had 17 players. But I, with, with the way it worked out with my jewels and everything, I, I had one of the players that wasn't playing Aitken, for example, was on the field. So I would have copped an AE. So I could literally get, I could have got Dylan Brown in as my AE, do you know what I mean? Without having to put the reserve on him. And I don't need to worry about trying to get that 40 points from a front row. Or I can get that potential 100 from Dylan Brown. Yeah. So you don't need to use all your reserves. As long as you only have the one, you can get that AE. That's it's a free loop. So, all righty, let's move on to the trade outs quickly. So number one on the trade out list is Kiraz. So um, I feel like this is, uh, he's, I like Karaz a lot, but I think this is what everyone's... Tra- they're all trading him out to try to get in the puppies, I reckon. Whisperer? It's exactly what they're doing. It's exactly what yeah. I'm doing as well. Um, yeah. Karaz, he's definitely served the purpose, but I don't know about you boys, but I've never picked him um, Like in terms of like playing him. I've played him and he gets 25. I don't play him and he gets 80. <laughs> I honestly don't think I've I've picked him correctly this year. Uh, but in saying that, he's made us, what, nearly 300K? Awesome. Mm. Um, but yeah, definitely time to move him on. Um, yeah, he's definitely peaked and, and not a guy I want to have in my run home side. Yeah. Yep. Definitely agree. Uh, and Glenn, number two, traded out here. Uh, Campbell Graham injured, looking like he could be out for up to eight weeks. So no brainer. Yeah. Well, that's who I've traded out. I mean, I uh, reluctantly, but I mean, mm-hmm. I, it sort of was a um, a silver lining, wasn't it? I mean, I, I didn't know who I wanted to trade out this week. And when Campbell Graham wasn't playing and Talakai, I sort of, well, there you go. There's my two numbers. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I lost two by round players, but at least I didn't have to sell players like I, I might have had to have sold someone like Gus or even kick out to get Papa Nelson. So Campbell Graham sort of saved me there. Yeah. And there's plenty of options because he's such a decent price. There's plenty of options there. I'm actually trading him this week as well. I'm downgrading. I'm getting about 200,000 out of it to a, a solid player. So um, number three on the trade out list is one probably a bit more discussion about this one. So I'll go to you, Isbra. Uh, Payne Haas. 
Uh, obviously, he looks like he's going to be out for three weeks, no origin. Um, would you be holding or would you be selling? I don't know. He's yeah, I know. He's, he's 480K. Like, Payne Haas less than 500K, huge. But mm. as you said, like, do you really want to be stuffing around with trades in the front row forward? I mean, surely people have Ming. Some probably have Lolo, Tarpany, IPAP. Like, I'm sure you can just get the cover and maybe play him, I don't know, in a couple of weeks. I, I don't. I was very much in the, in the sell camp like a month ago, but now mm. I'm kind of like, I can see why people are doing it, but I, I don't love it. I don't hate it. Um, it's a lot of money to be sitting there with like the potential of him like being out for indefinite, but unless you can get like, and that's like what front row forward really stands out this week. There's, there's not many like Tarpany. Yeah. But he doesn't play this week. Um, Lolo doesn't play this week. I perhaps the only one I'm sure a lot of people own him already. So it's kind of like who, so I'd rather, just, I think it's going to be like from Payne Haas to say Paul. Yeah. yeah and then for, for, for like, yeah. So, I, yeah, I just yeah. I just hold to be honest. Yeah. Well, I, I actually, uh, I know we don't want to mess around with our front rolls too much, but I've got plenty of trades available still. So what I'm actually looking at doing, because I still I, I don't have the luxury of having all those front rows. I've got uh, IPAP, i got Ming, and then I've got two crappy ones, like Musgrove there and I've got Leo Thompson. So I can literally go Musgrove to Payne Haas for an extra 100K. Yeah. That's crazy exciting for me. And I'll probably will do that when, when Haas is back. Um, so to me, that's the trade in for sure, but yeah, and I'd, I'd, I'd still be holding, um, just because like, there's so much depth there now. And I think that because, because of how they're using Ming at the moment, it's been, it's, uh, it's helping all the coaches out, which is great. DPJ out as well. Also might free up a little bit more time for Ming as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I heard that what, Leah, uh, Luke Thompson's coming back probably, uh, this week into Australia, um, which is probably the reason why he actually has had extra minutes. But because he's leaving the loop, he's coming back probably be ready for round eighteen. However, yeah, he's, like you said, we've still got TPJ out, so the points should be pretty good. So, and, and most of us have got Ming as our third anyway. I mean, I yeah. he's he's on my bench and he's just there that, he, and he's very been handy because dogs have been playing last games or one of the later games. So if someone's out late, throw it on me. Yeah. He's always a, a good option just to as an emergency there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll do the next two in the one go, guys. Um, Angus and Teddy are both being traded out pretty heavily. Um, I'm yeah a little bit shocked on this one. I don't own either of them, but I, I would not be letting them go. I can understand the Angus one to a point. Uh, look, he only scored 34 last week. I was thinking about selling him this week too, but you take out the sin bin, that takes him back up to 44, and then you take out the 10 minutes that he was away. Let's give him six points. So 50 points in a week where all middle forwards and edge forwards sort of did nothing in the pouring rain. And mm. there was also a report um, after the game that he was quick as a dog, yeah. barely trained. So very underfit. So I was in the sell camp, but now I'm moving towards the, the hold camp. I think he'll just be a keeper for the run home. As for Teddy, uh, I want to hear a solid argument as to why we're selling. Cause I can't think of one at all. No. Um, yeah. You've just created a team and you've still got 42 trades left and that's, you're going to bring him back in next week. So <laughs> you maybe have opened Jack in the first time since round one. You're like, Oh, he's not playing this week. Apart, <laughs> apart that, no, like I'm not selling, I'm not selling him to Pappy. I'm not selling him to Trell. I'm finding other ways to get those guys in. Um, if, if I, own, if I own Teddy, then he is my second fullback and I get one of the other guys in, but by no means am I selling him to fund this weird fullback movement. People are doing not a chance. Yep. I percent agree. All right, we'll move on to number six now, most traded out, and that's Ming. Uh, another one that I plan on holding pretty much for the run home, Glenn. Yeah, well, I mean, I think he's a handy third. I, I think that people want to be careful if they got to um, low play, you know, like Pole and someone else on the bench mm. It's not uh, a third quality. I think Ming's very handy now that he's about to get dual also. Um, personally, I wouldn't be doing it. Like, I, I, I'll keep repeating it. I would not be playing around with the front row. But having said mm. that, we're in a position, a lot of us, where we look at our team and say, there's no one I really want to sell. So Ming may be the option for people to get the cash to get to Pappenhaus. And if you're doing that, I get it. But if you're just doing it to bring in a front rower for this round, just just don't. Mm. I, think, I think something that we're not really mentioning either, I don't know how relevant it is, but Ming did pick up Jewel last week as well. Um, yeah. just, just something to worth note that he's now a little bit more flexible in your sides. And um, I definitely think there's worse people to... You know, like, oh, crap, Maddo's out. or oh, crap, Tago's out. I need to put the reserve on someone. You know what? If it's Ming, there's there's definitely worse options. So I wouldn't be selling out of, like, performance, but I can understand why people are doing it, maybe to generate some funds for the higher ceiling guys. Yeah. No, fair call. All right, number seven on the list, uh, Joseph Sawali being traded out. Um, yeah, he's – I reckon he's that ideal fifth center wing that you want to have for the run home on matchups. Yeah. Whisperer? 
yeah, no, I, I agree. I sold him last week, but um, I, I think I sold him for Toto. So that worked yeah. out okay. Um, but yeah, if, if you're not forced to sell him, he could be a guy that you play based off matchups. I mean, Joey Manu is just getting the ball whenever he's calling for it. Um, and he's generating two defenders, which is leaving Sawali open. Uh, also just a freak of nature, like all the hype that was surrounding him is very much warranted and he's putting up super coach points. But um, I guess it depends on on your side. If you've got plenty of trades, I can understand it. If you're low on them, then yeah, I think you could be a, a definitely a guy that you play based off matchups. Yep, 100%. Um, Glenn, number eight, traded out, mate. Um, Burbo. Um, I don't think he's generating enough cash to really try. He's going to be my nuff. I don't need to trade him out. Yeah, I mean, look, he's dual. I mean, yeah. I'm bringing in Jed Cartwright as my third trade this week, and I'm doing that purely because of the dual and the money that it gives me to get to Desco next week. Mm. So, I mean, if I had, as you just pointed out, there's not enough money generated, but I just wanted to go back to Sawali. Mm. Uh, you'll find that a lot of people who are trading Sawali and Koala this week are doing it because they've probably got him at fullback and they're going that to, Pep, to Pappenhaus. And so I get it. I've kept mm. Sawali. He will be my sixth centre wing. And, um, and I'm keeping Angus and I'm getting Teddy. I really like the Roosters um, run home. Yep. All right. Number nine on the trade out list, Tamara Martin. Um, a lot of people held on to him for this round and he's gone with the rib injury. So uh, no brainer there. Um, we'll go to the last one though. Uh, there's a bit, a bit of a you know, maybes or should we do this? Should we do that? Um, Talakai, number 10, traded out. Yeah. I've always been anti. I've always been for Talakai um, this year. I, I just I rate him very highly. I I went on a big rant last night about how Cam, how Campbell Graham keeps his tries, but Talakai doesn't keep his. I, oh yeah, baffled me. I honestly don't understand it. Um, however, though, like Talakai, Roosters have a glorious draw. Roosters, uh, Sharks have a gl- glorious draw to run home. There's a reason why we all invested in Mulatalo. Um, I also want to invest in the guy on his inside as well. The same reason why people bought Campbell Graham um, to pair him up with AJ if they wanted to have them for the South Golden period during the middle of the year they had. But Talakai for me, I'm, I'm just holding. Uh, I think it's the definition of a luxury trade. If he wasn't out this week, people wouldn't be selling him, obviously. But mm-hmm. in, that, in saying that, like they have a tough two weeks, but apart from that, it's a glorious run home, and I'm just going to be holding. Yeah. So like I, I'm in a similar boat with um, I got Aiken there, and I was planning on trading Aiken out this week, and then I was like, what, what's the point? He's doing a doing a good enough job for me. He's stable in the center wing, and Talakai is not like he's not scoring very low scores. He's got a good base, and he has that high ceiling. So I'd, I'd be keeping him. So that's my thoughts anyway. Yeah, did nothing last week and scored fifty four. So yeah, yeah, that's right. That's, that's good enough for me. Without a try assist. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just as well, Talakai, disgusting. <laughs> All righty, guys. So let's move on to the next segment today. We're going to talk about um, the cheapies that are out there at the moment. We're going to talk about the options. Which ones are we going to bring in this week? Um, if, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for that one and done, which most people are, or you're looking for a guy to play on a bit longer. Um, we'll start off um, with Whisperer. So, Paul, um, 175K, bottom dollar. Um, I am not going to go for Paul because I want the one and done. Would you be bringing in Paul this week if... What's he going to score when he say after this round? Yeah, I'm confused as to what I'm doing. Like I'm planning for the next two weeks, and my budget is cutting razor thin. Um, I might make my team by about five k, depending on price rises. So, look, I've got Jed Cartwright, but I'm very tempted to go down the pole just for the extra thirty k that's going to allow me to do it. Look, he's going to be a bit of an AE nightmare, but I'm holding Andrew for feet up, so I've already got an AE nightmare in my side. So, like, mm. it doesn't worry me. However. What he did last week was was really good. Forty four points in base power. Mm-hmm. Like he he was in everything. Um, as a as a Tigers fan, there's a little bit of intel going around that that Tim Sheens has urged Brett Kamali to start promoting these youth guys through because the Tigers are, are in crisis mode. So let's hey let's start preparing these youth guys. Alex Twal out for the season. James Tarmel not getting any younger. Um, Joe Offahengo it looks like he's locked down that lock role. So there's a, a little bit of ro- forward rotation, and I, I can definitely get behind picking him up. Um, doesn't look like he will be an AE nightmare. Looks like his work rate's good enough to be, you know, worst case, 35, 40 points, which isn't terrible. Uh, and he is bottom dollar. So I'm definitely not locked into my trades and, and he is in my consideration. He is not mm. one and he is not a one and done, as you said. I think he'll be there for the long long term. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't hate it at all. Well, well, number two on my list, I'll go to you, Glenn. This is my favorite out of the one and dones, and that's Jed Cartwright. We've already touched on him before. Um, your thoughts yeah. on Jed Cartwright, mate? Yeah, I like Jed Cartwright. I think he, yeah, Tried. He'll come in. He'll play the one round and possibly go. He may even play the sec uh, a second game, just depending on who backs up. Um, he's he's durable, you know, like he's dual. Sorry, 
uh, it's 205k. Like I called it, I don't know if you remember, but I wrote it in the a uh, couple of weeks ago in a couple of chats. I said, I reckon with people not even making the bench, mm-hmm. I think Ed Cartwright's going to make it. And I, I got that one right. So just to just to look on the caveat, are we worried that he does get a bench spot? Now we've got Harm Seller who's injured. And we've got Liam Knight who's, who's just had his season over. Uh, there is one forward spot up for grabs. Are we worried that he does go back to the bench? And, and in that case, you'd rather just take Polly. There's also a scenario where Cheekam comes on. And um, it, it, I think it was Cheekam. Yeah, Cheekam. Cheekam is on is on the bench. Uh, yeah. they, mm. See, I have a really weird bench. They've got Cody Nikarima and Blake Taft both on the bench. Yeah. Davey, Davey Mowali and Michael Cheekam sort of. Well, Tate will drop out and I think Mitchell will come in. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's as weird as you guys think. I think because they've got Havili starting at nine. So Havili has that lock roll covered as well. Um, so oh, I don't it, think no, it's, it, this this bench reeks of uh, Canberra Raiders. You know how they were people, yeah, yeah. Tom Starling and then Nickel Cookstar. Um, it reeks of, and then like the middle's playing big minutes. I could see Cartwright playing 60 plus yeah. in that arrow role. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, he is 30K more than uh, Pole. And then, but he also does have the jewel. But when we're owning guys like Talakai and, uh, I mean, just, I'm sure some teams own Shannon Harris and then other teams as well still own Isaac Tago. Do we need the jewel? Is that is that even like reliant? I think Fafida will come in actually, not Mitchell. Uh, and Tafe will drop out. That's just my take on it. But uh, I can see a scenario that's unlikely but possible where Cheekam starts and um, Jed goes back to the bench. So just watch out for that. The luck, mm. luckily, luckily for super coaches, um, that game will be played before the, the Tigers game. So yeah. if that is if that is the the thing, then I will definitely be skipping to to Mowali and I, not Mowali. I'll definitely be skipping to to Polly. And I, I could even do that before. Like we'll obviously we'll, we'll talk about our trades at the end of the episode. But I'm definitely not locked into to one of them, and that does involve Jed Cartwright. Yeah. And I'll tell you another one. To, uh, have you written down Palacia? Yeah, I've got, got a heap of lists. I, got, I can go through the whole list if you want, man. I've got a pretty big one. Yeah, I've got them all here too. There was a lot more than I realised. So. Yeah, there was. I went through them all myself. Mm. So um, we'll go on the next one on the list. And this is the guy who's just been added in, Hosking. Um, I'm not, I've never heard of this guy until now. I'm sure there's a couple of uh, like Broncos fanatics that um, know him pretty well, but... Um, I never heard of him, and I think he's on Cape Wall's edge. I don't think Cape Wall's going to have any chance of losing that. And then you've got uh, Palisaya, which we're going to talk about later, who probably falls that bench spot. And I think Hoskins drops that all together. So your thoughts on that, Whisperer? I'm all over Hos- Hoskins. He's, mm. he's, he screams, hey, I am a one and done, and that's what I need for my team. Mm. Um, so I am all over him. Bottom dollar, hopefully he plays 65 plus, gets 40 points. I'd be very happy with that. And yeah. I was I was nothing at anyway, and this is I guess for for some, some people that are listening to this podcast that maybe new to Supercoach that wondering why we're advocating for guys that will never play again. And um, I posted my trades over on Twitter, <laughs> and some people did message me saying like I don't think they have good job security. That's the entire point. Um, mm. we're, we're looking at, at downgrading guys. For example, my side I've got a fair bit of depth, so yeah. I'm definitely looking to trim the fat uh, and cut it down. And this is a guy that is bottom dollar. I can bring him in. And if he drops out of the team, that is, that is the best result for me personally, because I'm not looking mm-hmm. to make money off him. I'm not looking to get points off him in the long term. It's simply a one-week play. And uh, yeah, as you said, there's uh, Jordan Ricky. He's going to have a spot on the edge. You're going to have Palisade. You're going to have Katewell. You're going to have Haas returning. Uh, so that's going to take a, a couple of middle forwards. So yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't care how good he plays. He might jag a, an 18th man spot on merit or whatever, but I, I don't really see him lasting much longer in this side. And that's perfect for Supercoach. Yeah, that's ideal. That's what we're going. I'm, I'm in the same position. I don't have an NPR. So mm. bringing him in allows that um, fade out NPR. So yeah. actually, I've got Schiller. I, 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 I can't <laughs> forget that I've got Schiller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like, it's pretty much uh, it, it, trading out in the one and done. is It's like it works on two levels. You're trying to develop that cash to generate more cash to build up for another gun, as well as get that enough that's going to just disappear and no more, no longer an AE nightmare. So, all righty, we'll move on to the next one. So that's, um, uh, talk, talk about the rookies as well. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Uh, Matamua from the Tigers. Yeah. Um, starting on the bench there, bottom dollar there. Um, I reckon there's more options. We just spoke about more and probably more favorable options there that we could use to get more minutes. So, uh, I'm not really overly fussed on that. Um, then there's, uh, Mole. He's had a bit of more, a bit more time in the NRL at the moment. Um, but he's also a fringe player as well, which is a concern because he had, I think last week he got like six points. So, yeah, David yeah. Mo- 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 like there's big raps on him. Um, mm. But he's the kind of guy that, like, come around 25, 
could definitely be in that side. Um, yeah. If Cam Murray gets a rest, Jaira gets a rest. Uh, Mark Nichols, if he's like got a couple of niggles, like, yeah, he's, I don't know if he's going to get the minutes. If the bench stays the same, I think he will because the bench is really weird. But <laughs> th- there's a lot of a lot of ifs and buts. I'd rather just take the, you know, the polies of the world or, or even like an 80 minute back row in Hoskins rather than, than um, yeah, David Moali. Mm-hmm. Um, Glenn, would you consider Michael Molo from the Dragons? No. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel now. <laughs> Safe as that? Nope. <laughs> uh, and there's one more. I'll say one more debutant over here as well that we've got um, from the Broncos. And that's um, Xavier. Oh, not debutant. I think he's played last year, one game or two. Uh, Xavier Willison as well on the bench there. Uh, 205K um, from the bench of the Broncos there. He should also drop out after this game. Uh, I think his PPA might be a bit better than Hoskins, but it's still probably less minutes, I believe. Yeah, no, I, I also agree. I'm um, just going back to Mick Molo. I know that we don't have much to talk about there. <laughs> a positive, the, the Dragons play a lot of late games. So yeah. Yeah, could yeah. be a decent captaincy option if you ever chuck the loop on. But yeah, if he's if he's going to be niggling around the side, then it's going to be a nightmare. Yeah, And that's a good point you just brought up. So if you are, the, how we're talking about, we want to knock out a player, get a bit of money. We want them to play one game and drop out. It's really a good idea to have a look at the draw and see who does play late. So that that player you're bringing in that does drop out does play later in the round so that that, that they bring you some use as well for the looping option. Because the later you can loop in a round, the more um, flexibility you have. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, let's move on. I've only got uh, three more people here to talk about. So we've got from the storm, we've got Jordan Grant as well. Uh, he's been in and about that team for quite a while too. And also a bit, a bit risky there on the fringe of the team. And then we've got another one that actually I don't mind this guy at all, but I don't think I'll get him in because he's just the minutes aren't there. That's Makatoa from the Eels. Um, he's 207k, which I actually think is a pretty decent price for him. And he has a chance to get a he's got he got a pretty good SC friendly game. I just don't see the minutes coming his way. Uh, and then there's one that Glenn wanted to talk about, and that's uh from the Broncos, that's Palace here. Um, do you think he stays around in a similar role to what Paul would do, like on the bench there? We're, yeah, we're really that. scraping the barrel here, aren't we, boys? <laughs> I don't think any of these players are really worth talking. I mean, they're all players to trade down to to generate cash. Then, you know, I think we nailed the, the better ones earlier um, mm. in each position. So, I mean, one other one that's a little bit more pricey than the others that you haven't mentioned in the centre wing position is actually Pereira, Jordan mm. Pereira from the Broncos. And uh, he, he offers you the ceiling um, as well. So, I mean, something to consider for players with T&M dropping out. Uh, nearly, nearly possibly going to the back. So I think Pereira was three twenty, was he? Yeah, around that price. Yeah, it's just a just a really crappy price. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's awkward. Sh- we're now in round seventeen. We're, we're not buying these guys to make money. Like we're not buying no, them no. to to increase our team value. Surely our team value is good enough to to sit there where it is. I mean, mine's fourteen point one million or something. I, I don't need the cash. So uh, that's why I'm prioritizing the the guys like Polly, Cartwright, Hosking, just because they're gonna offer me no value moving forward. And that's, and that's what I want. I don't want these guys. They're going to, you know, play 15 minutes off the bench and score six points. It's just, it's not worth it for me. Yep. Awesome. All right. That wraps that section up there nice and neatly. So let's move on to our next section. We're going to talk about, um, because I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but a lot of the teams around the top there are starting to look very similar. So we're going to try and look at some pods for the run home. Uh, I'm going to kick us off with my favorite pod um, that I want to talk about. Um, and that's DCE. Uh, I think he's actually at a pretty decent price for what he can perform as well. So he's 587,000, a break even of nine. I know he's, this is not to trade in this week, obviously. He's got origin there. He's got a break even of nine, owned by 4% of coaches, um, which is understandable. You've got Nico Hines and Cleary out there that you're one on your team. Um, but this is what really got me excited. Um, the run from 18 onwards starts with Newcastle, St. George. The Roosters have been leaking quite a lot of points to fullbacks. And uh, one of the biggest teams that leaking the most points to fullbacks is Parramatta, who they play next. And then they've got the Gold Coast Titans. Uh, that's a very juicy run there. And if you like me and you've got a few extra trades up your belt, um, that last Gold Coast game after that, they, had, they played the Sharks. And also the Sharks start running into their really good draw from then onwards. So I could easily go down our DCE to Nick Hines if I need to for that run home. Can Thoughts I on that one? Answer to that, yeah. Um, firstly, I think a lot of people are going to want to have, I mean, Cleary and Hines, you're going to want in the halves because they're both goal kickers. And then you're going to want Pappenhausen, who's also a goal kicker, and then Tedesco at fullback. 
And I agree with you, sides are looking um, similar. And I, was, I went through all the numbers. I mean, Hines is averaging 84.5 and uh, Cleary 87.6, Hughes 72.6. But you're right, DC at 65.8. On, run, on the run home, he does tend to play better football. So I, I hear what you're saying. If you're looking for a pod in, in the halfback position, that is an option for sure, or Hughes. Yeah. If you're a bit more like uh, the Whisperer and you're a bit higher ranked, I wouldn't suggest it. Um, I think it's um, maybe Nico Hines and Cleary that is the way to go. But what do you think, Whisperer? Any love for Sam Walker? Dragons, Newcastle, Manly Broncos, Cowboys, Tigers. Uh, and then you've obviously got Melbourne and the, the Roosters, uh, Rabbitohs in the, the last two games. But the Roosters had a really good draw. We're, we're really keen on Teddy. Um, mm. But yeah, any love for, for Sammy Walker at, what is he, 5.6 in ownership as well? Oh, I love the DCA show. I think he's the best pod mm. halfback. But if you're trying to pod the pod, um, mm. oh, may, maybe Sam Walker as well? Yeah, I'm all over the Roosters. I've held Sawali. Mm. I've held Angus. I'm jumping onto Esco. And, uh, and I like it. I, I, I do. I, I, as a pod, you yeah. know, if you're looking for a pod for the run home, I think Walker has that ceiling, that upside too. Um, I, I have been chucked in the spot here with pods, so I'll, I'll rattle off a, a few quickly. 5.5% 5, <laughs> 5. ownership doesn't play this week, but Reese Robson with Harry Grant looking a little bit, you know, inconsistent after the back of origin. Um, Damien Cook might be out of the price range for some. Cam McInnes, you know, not doing anything. Ruben Cotter. Probably going to be eased back in with his with his hamstring issue, and Reese Robson's playing some great footy right now, and only owned by five point five percent of teams. Yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah. I've seen a, a lot of on my head to heads actually have him in there as a sneaky little pod, and I'm not enjoying watching those games when he's playing because he's looking scary with the ball. He's uh, on fire at the moment. So, and I will give sorry, I'll give one more, and this this is a this is a very rogue shout, but owned <laughs> owned by five point three percent of teams with. The Sharks this week, the Raiders next week, and you've got teams like the Warriors, the Tigers, and the Broncos with Parramatta in there as well. He can go on runs, Justin Ollum. I know it's a it's a huge, huge shout, but Melbourne with with their sort of their, their guns back with Munster back, Pappenhausen back. Um, you know, Coates not in the side, they're not favoring the right as much anymore. And you obviously got Remus Smith now out for the season, trying to sell myself here with uh, Justin Ollum, but I know it, it could be worse for your cash comps. You don't need to sell me, mate. Um, spoiler alert: He's one of my trades this week. I'm oh. trading. I'm trading Campbell Graham to Olam this week. Um, huge, huge. I love. I love watching him as an NRL fan. Um, and now I'm in my team, so I'm going to be dreading that he does, goes all right. But I think we um there was a stat there out there before where he's averaging about 60 for the season, but he averages a bit more when Pappenhausen plays. It's about 68, closer to 70. So it might be a. It's, I like the shout. That's the reason why I went there. And I can't, wait for, I can't wait for Justin Allen to be at about 10% ownership by tomorrow morning. <laughs> That's it. Love it. Awesome. I, I, will, I will say one thing about Sam Walker. I do like him as a pod, but I'm going to say my team is uh, a bit different to most where I've got, I've got a lot of pods in my team to try and catch up. Yeah. And a lot of those pods are players that have that low floor. And I don't think I can have any more. Um, I, I got players, for example, that have like a massive ceiling but a very low floor, like Sevo, for example. So we uh, might see you score 1750 next week, or yeah, pretty much or, yeah. <laughs> 530. If they all fire, mate, I am taking the thousand dollars. So, <laughs> so I have a pod I want to throw out there that I've been holding my tongue on. <laughs> and, um, that's Valentine Holmes. Yeah. I actually really like the cows draw, as we just pointed out. Uh, cows have got Broncos, a buy. Sharks, Tigers, Dragons, Dogs, Roosters, Warriors, Douse, and then Penrith. So, I mean, up to the Warriors, I, I, I don't mind most of that draw. I think that... You've, you've also got the Penrith in round 25 as well. So, mm-hmm. if they've got the minor premiership locked up, Brew made a great point on my podcast yesterday. Like, it could be a great to depleted the Panther side. That's mm. right, yeah. Actually, that's a very good point. Um, they, they, they will probably likely rest players. And, and based on some movement in the lower grade this week, there's even a chance that the Rift, uh, Penrith some players next week as well um, after the Open. Mm. In saying that, I will say that um, they have. It was the first after the first buy they rested a few. Oh, before, it was before the first buy when we when we actually played that round thirteen match. They rested players um, in the reserve grade team before that round, and then obviously Soz and Falls came in or whatever. And then the week after, they rested them from the reserve grade again, but they didn't play. So yeah. there's two different alternatives there and they've rested them again. So it might not happen. It could be a case of like, God, we, we really don't want Falls and Sauce to get injured because if yeah. they do, I'm I'm forced to play Cleary and Jerome. Like if they want to back up, they've got the option there, but like you might not, you might be forced for them to back yeah. up even if they have a niggle or so. So maybe it's just a, a precautionary case. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm really thinking that Luai and Cleary are going to want to play, but it's all whether they 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 need to have that cover in case they just can't. So, can I just throw out a pod for this round too. I know you are going to probably not like this one, but Lane. That's why they're a pod, mate. That's why they're yeah, pods. Lane's been uh, Lane. No, Lane. I feel like Lane isn't a pod. Like I feel like every no. second man is <laughs> in the league. Like honestly. Well, I think that wasn't until Maddo was named. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, I was jumping on Lane, and I'll be honest, I've actually got Maddo, but I'm actually tempted to go back to Lane um, because I, I own Dylan Brown and I own Moses at the moment uh, with Cleary, and I'm very tempted to, because um, Moses is going to become Tedesco, but I I don't know. I just like Lane on that edge with Brown. It's really beautiful when you're 5'8 and your second row combined. I slandered Sean Lane all preseason, <laughs> but so, so, so legally I'm not allowed to buy him, but I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm gonna go with. I've got a few more here, but I, I don't think they're really they're a bit crazy. But I will say one that I really like. Um, he's not playing this week, but I like him for the run home as a different second row option, and that's Hudson Young. He's a bit on the expensive side, sitting at five hundred ninety nine thousand. Um, he's got a break even of forty, so he's not overly gonna lose or make too much money. He's only two percent owned. He's averaging sixty one for the year, but his three round average is seventy nine. Yeah. He seems on a heat at the moment. The one, th- and he's, the one thing I will say, though, is his draw is extremely up and down. It is literally the definition of up and down. It goes Melbourne, New Zealand, Gold Coast, Panthers, St. George, Newcastle. So it is, there's a few easy games there for him. but Manly Tigers, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, he's, he's, not like, he's a guy that you'd play on matchups, but he's just also too expensive at the same time as well. Yeah, but that's the reason like, why he's a pod. Like 600K just like sitting there on your bench. It's like, ugh. Um, mm. On the Raiders... You mentioned a guy that could be a little bit cheaper now that Charles Ingle Clookstar is, you know, on the outer. Can we get behind? Look, it's a huge, huge pod shout. You're not going to have two premium fullbacks, but Xavier Savage, if you're strictly playing head to head? No. <laughs> I, I look, Fair enough. I, yeah, yeah I, I don't like it. I, I just think because of the ceiling on the others is just so high. But I look, yeah, I, I, I get it. Had Jewel. I wish he had Jewel. Like if he had that mm-hmm. center, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, he was a buy around about five rounds ago. I just go over the second rowers. Like we were talking, you were talking earlier about the ones that keep. So at the moment, I have Gus, Olakuatu, Kikau, Maddo, Barnett, and I can't remember, oh, and Jed. Plenty of ceiling um, there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. I've got a bit of ceiling there. And I want to get Barnett to David Fafita. So that was who I was trying to think of. So David Fafita is another one that um, could actually be a trade down, for, um, mm. depending on who you've got. I mean, he, Depending on minutes, we talked about him before the pod. So, yeah, he could be someone that you could target for the run home with that ceiling as well. David Fafita. Yeah, well, I'm looking at um because I've still got bloody Tuolungi in my team. I've been trying to get rid of him for ages, and I just kept on doing for a long time. Um, but now he's an extra number starting for the Tigers for my for this round for me. But I think um I'll have to trade up, but I'll be trading up from Tuolungi to Fafita. That's my plan. Yeah. Um, I've banked uh, so much cash this week. Um, I can literally go um. Kennedy to Pappenhausen next week and then McKinnis to Grant next week um, without even, yeah. So, and then that, that'll still leave me a fair bit of cash where I can look at getting someone like a feeder in my second row for the run home. So, can I just say I warned everybody on McKinnis? <laughs> yeah, you like, you like to say that, but um, I, I, I went from Randall to him. Oh, I wasn't, I didn't even realize you had him when I just said that. I, yeah. I, I also brought him the week that he decided to score two tries. So I'm, I'm, pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty happy with him. I was very happy with him. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I just think that he, I mean, for me with Fanuk and coming back, it was always oh, yeah. going to be a reduction in minutes. But uh, uh, anyway. If you remember when um, I, I on the podcast, I said I was bringing him in and um, you you did warn me about him, but I did say that I had a plan that um, I was hoping Fanukin was out a bit longer, but my plan was to go him to Grant when Fanukin came back. And yeah. I was hoping that Fanukin will be back in round 18. Yeah. So I was unlucky there. I missed two rounds. But in saying that, I'm still going to, like Grant's going down in price and so is uh, McKinnis. So I'm not, that, that gap is not getting any smaller or bigger. So it doesn't bother me too much. Yeah. So, all right, guys, a few... Juicy pods there we have brought up. So it pretty much wraps everything up when it comes to content. So let's uh go around the grounds, talk about what trades we're doing for the week. I'll start with you, Whisper. What are we doing, mate? Do you know? Oh, mate, it changes <laughs> every five minutes. But but right now, I think I'm pretty much locked in to uh, Karaz, to Pappenhausen. We are then going to go, uh, so what, not, yeah, Sawali down to, um, God, what's his name? Uh, Hoskins. It's going to mm-hmm. give me a bunch of, bunch of cash to do the Pappenhausen move. And then looking at my trades moving forward. So, like I said, I want to do it in three trades. On the chopping block, I've got McInnes, I've got Barnett, and I've got Adam Elliott. 
Um, they're sort of they're sort of on my way out. I'm looking at bringing in Grant Tedesco and Hamole Olokawatu. The difference between those three is about 420k. So I need to make big money. So we're trading out Elliot. We're bringing in whether it be uh, Pole or Cartwright. Haven't decided yet, but just starting to thin the squad out uh, in plans to just use three trades to basically go guns next week. I think the plan is to go McInnes to Grant. And then um, I think Barnett to Hamole. And then when Cody, after Cody plays, I think the, the Bulldogs next week, and then he'll be, be hum Tedesco. So two nuffs, two nuffs in, um, Pappenhausen in. And yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of, I just haven't really decided whether we go Pole or, or Cartwright, maybe leading towards Pole the more we speak about it, because I need to try and generate as much free money as possible. Yeah, it does hurt. I was when I saw that um that Hoskins was a, a lock when I, before he got released. I was like, oh, maybe they'll give him jewel. They didn't give him jewel, no, so I was upset. No jewel, no jewel. Yeah. But I just want to I just want to give a quick uh, moment of silence to Adam Elliott in my side. I I, I got. I don't think you've always understood how much heat that I copped for suggesting he was. <laughs> and I look honestly, I'm walking around ten foot tall right now because he's been <laughs> him and Joey Tarpany have just been revelations. Uh, Adam mm-hmm. Elliott, like. He's nearly seven, like he's 650k or something. Like I, I didn't see this coming. I, I bought him for around 13, thinking he'd maybe punch out 55, 60, but he's played some really good footy. And yeah, I, I don't want to sell him, but um, I'm going to hold Angus. It was a choice between Angus or um, or Elliot, and I'm probably leaning towards Elliot as a sell, unfortunately. I think um, as soon as Elliot started that when he first started at Hooker that week, he just looked like a different player, didn't oh, he? Mate. Like, oh, he's a super coach friendly player. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but we, we just we didn't see this kind of I guess he was stuck on an edge at the ball like we didn't see this kind of like just like vigor he pumps through the middle like he was just he was shafted on edge in a really bad bulldog side and you know Josh Jackson being Josh Jackson just taking a lot of ball and yeah Elliot like at hooker he looked really good and he, he came on through lock and looked really good like offloading mm-hmm. at will I'm um, very interested to see how he's used next year at uh the Knights because you're gonna have Frizzell on one and you're gonna have Barnett off to the Warriors I think from memory so maybe Adam O'Brien shifts him on an edge, which would be awful. I just really love him through the middle there. Mm, totally agree. All right, no, Glenn. I just, what... to, I just wanted to put out my love for, for Adam O'Brien. <laughs> That's right. sensational. It's putting out love by saying I told you so as well at the same time. So. Okay, give myself a pat on the back while I can. <laughs> it's the only way we'll learn. It's so... <laughs> All right, Glenn. Uh, what trades are you doing this week, mate, if any? Uh, yeah, I'm doing three. So what I've done was, as you know, I built up a bit of a cache of coins. So I was in a fortunate position to just go Koala to Pappenhausen. Mm. So that was one trade. My second trade was Campbell Graham to Madison, uh, to Maddo. But I haven't completely been sold on that one yet. I'm, I'm debating uh, uh, possibly Lane. And, um, mm. and then the third trade that I'm making, now this one I'm not unsure. I'm getting Jed Cartwright, but it's between Sawali and Talakai who I have to give up. Now, I don't like giving up either, but doing that gives me a, a shitload of coin that enables me to bring in Grant and Tedesco, bang, bang. And um, so, yeah, and then my side's complete. I, I'll be sitting, I've got six trades left. So that, the downside to that is with a completed side that I've everyone I'm happy with, I'll be down to four trades after Tedesco and Grant. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a few condoms this week. We've been getting news about players being out every five seconds and people have niggles every five seconds. It's like, we have to just wait till TOT. It's going to be, to, yeah, we're going to have to get on the ball this week, I think. So watch out for the TikToks this week, guys. I'll make sure I put the team list out. So I'm annoyed I bought Moses last week, mate. I wished I had a, um, waited and bought Latrell this week, but I, I just mm. like the ceiling against the Tigers and the Warriors. Mm. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm a little bit torn with my trade. So I know I'm going Campbell Graham to Olam. Um, that's a given. And I know I'm going to go Nico Hines to Latrell. Um, the only thing I'm torn between is um, whether I go Munster to Dylan Brown this week to get that solid number in seven in my 17. Or because um, then I have to trade him back in no matter what. Um, or do I go cooler out for Hoskins and get that 17th number there? And that frees up about 700K for me in my bank, which makes my trades for the run home a lot easier. And I don't need to bring back Munster. Um, and I've got, yeah, my halves are set besides DCE, who I want to bring in. My fullbacks will almost be set the week after. So I'm um, still a bit torn with that one. But I'm really liking what Dylan Brown's going to show this week. I really reckon he's going to have a good game. Uh, and I don't want to miss those points. So. I mean, you're not going to take my advice. You never do. But I'm going to tell you what I would do. I would go the Dylan Brown one. I wouldn't go the Latrell one. I would hold Hines. I, I just think it's sideways, mate. 
But I look, I mean, as you pointed out, and rightfully, that you're behind and you're a head-to-head player. Um, but I really like the Dylan Brown matchup against the Tigers and there's the Warriors uh, a lot. Mm. And yeah, but like I said, I'm I'm, I'm doing uh, the the Dylan Brown one would be not to get I, 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 that would be my last trade. I'm still doing the Nico Hines to Latrell, so I can do that, both of those trades. That's what I'll be doing. So the the one that I'd be doing instead of would be um, cooler out to Hoskins. Right. Um, it's either it's either that trade or Munster to Dylan Brown. Okay. Um, and that's the yeah that's what I'm torn between. So. I just need to get that. Um, yeah, those pod players in there that might be helping me on the way home. And it frees up more. I'm leaning towards going Hoskins, but I just don't want to miss out on Dylan Brown's score. I reckon he's going to turn up quite nicely this week. So, yeah. And I wanted to get him in anyway for Cody Walker later on. So I thought I have to get, I can go Cody Walker to Munster next week could, or week after. Could be an option as well. So, all right. All right. Yeah, it's always come, it's always bad when I start with my trade with a disclaimer. So chances are they're pretty crazy. So, <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, start with VC and captain choices. So we get two shots at the at the wheel this week. So, um, how are you going? Whisper up. What are your plans? Couldn't decide between Heinz and Pappenhausen. Uh, <laughs> a choice they made for me. So we're going <laughs> going obviously Pappenhausen VC. I think every man these dog is doing that this week. Um, then I was tossing up between IPAP and Maddo for captaincy. Um, I could even take a shout on Cody Walker. It's ballsy, but I don't know. It depends. I mean, if I think the question, I think the more important question this week is what loop are we taking with so little captains options? Like, mm. is is seventy enough with how bad the captains are? Seventy. I reckon. Yeah, I reckon 70, 70, 75 is about the one ten mark in a normal week. So with that, when you think about it, I reckon eighty plus. I'd loop without question, but I think seventy onwards is a um and an R about it. I reckon. Look, with my captain, if if. Pappenhausen like shits the bed and gets like 25. I might take a flyer on Cody because I've got mm-hmm. nothing to lose then. Um, but if Pappenhausen goes for like 65, it sounds silly, but I might just stick with like IPAP, you know, just like a safer option. But yeah, I think it really dictates on um, on Pappenhausen this week because all eyes will definitely be focused on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Glenn? Uh, yeah, so... I'm still undecided. At the moment, I've got my VC on Pappenhausen and my C on um, Moses. But I, if it's a wet weather game, I'm really liking IPAP on that right side versus the Tigers. I actually have him for any time try scorer and I've got him in a multi mm. as well. I actually really like IPAP for this round and Madison, Maddo. So, um, yeah, and again, it depends how um, Pappenhausen goes. For me, I'm not taking under 90 because I think Pappenhausen mm. can get that. Yeah. Uh, I so. IPAP, sorry. Yeah. Um, well, uh, because I'm not getting Pappenhausen this week, I'm looking at VCing Luttrell um, and going into IPAP. So, um, and it, unless I do get Dylan Brown in, then I will captain Dylan Brown. Um, so, if I do decide to go that way, I will captain Dylan Brown instead of IPAP. Um, even though it is going to be a wet week, he, he's a ball hog, which is what is great for Super Coach. So, he's just going to hold the ball and run anyway. So um, I reckon, yeah, it'd be, that'd be my go. But I think at this stage, it's Luttrell into um, IPAP. So. Can I just say something too? If I owned Luttrell and IPAP this round, I would VC uh, Luttrell anyway. Mm. I just yeah. think that he's going to play up in the Broncos, uh, up in Queensland where it's a dry track. Um, and I think Pappenhausen, I, I don't like what I saw from the Storm last week. And I'm convinced that um, Pappenhausen owners are going to get a bit of a shock this week. I hope I'm wrong. Well, I, I, I did have a look at the um, NRL Supercoach stats page before, and the Sharks give up very little points to um, to fullbacks. That's right. Uh, so very little points in general they give up to. They give that most of the points come out of the wingers. Um, but and oh, that's why I, if I had if Hines was playing, I was going to VC Hines because I, if you look at the the stats uh, with Melbourne, they give up more points to halves than they give to any other position. Well, the other so person I've got any time try scorer this round is Mulatalo because he's mm. running at Anderson. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a shocker, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm sort of hoping Mulatalo runs one or two in. Yeah. All righty, guys. That's our captains for the week. So um, put everyone on the spot here. What kind of bold predictions do we have? So I'll start with you, Whisperer. Oh, uh, goodness. I will actually pull up my ones that I had <laughs> my own pod from yesterday. Um, I actually agree with Glenn. I, I had 
Um, I had Pap and Hausen and Hines to disappoint, but now it's just Pap. Um, I do suspect he, yeah, might falter a little bit. Um, but I've got Reed. Let's just put Reed Marnie against a really woeful Tigers middle for 70 plus. Okay. I like it. All right, Glenn. You're going you're gonna to give me like 40 this time like you did last time? No, I'm going <laughs> to give you three. I'm going to okay. give you Pappenhausen under 70. Yeah. I'm going to give you Mulantalo for a double. And I'm going to give you um, IPAP uh, also to get 90 plus. Okay. Well, normally mine are extremely bold, but this time I'm just going to stick with my gut and say Latrell outscores Puppy. Yeah. Uh, and that's my gut and that's more hopeful, but I actually... I think it's the case. The, the matchup, everything's saying that it's going to happen. So, I agree. Uh, yeah. All righty, guys. That about wraps everything up for tonight. Is there anything else we want to talk about? Yeah, can we just quickly, we, we didn't do it at the beginning. And I mean, I know most people know who you are, but let's just remind everyone who um, Supercoach Whisper is, what he does in the community and his page and stuff. He talks a whole lot of spec. That's what he <laughs> does. Yeah. He talks a whole lot of shit. Blakes. They don't like that Josh guy. No, he's, he's, he's rubbish. He's terrible. <laughs> um, no, look, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I guess I started off making visual content, um, something different in the space. Uh, hadn't happened, haven't had the time that I had last year to do it, but definitely flying through with the podcast, do that twice a week. I am the main host of the Dual Position podcast. Um, yeah, so come check me out. I'm on all socials. Follow me for really bad uh, advice, uh, opinions or whatever. I do tweet a lot of, a lot of rubbish. So, um, <laughs> check it out. But I, yeah, I, I, I give the occasional update here and there, which, um, which is good. So, I uh, appreciate the shout out. Yeah. Pretty sure the first I heard about the Campbell Graham being out for a bit was from you as well. So yeah. So, shout, out, shout out to one of my followers. Like, I honestly, I wish I had his name. He messaged me in like the dawn of the night. He's like, Campbell Graham's out. And I was like, Oh, I don't know how much to trust this, but <laughs> we get a po- oh, I got burnt really bad last year. Someone messaged me. They were like, Nathan Cleary's just broken his arm. Oh, sorry. They said Cleary's broken his arm. Wasn't it um, me that messaged you about Campbell Graham? Um, may have been you. May I can't remember. Someone, someone definitely reached out to me and, and I put it out there. But on the Cleary thing, it's it's just it's, you take things with a grain of salt. Someone messaged me that like Cleary's just broke his arm. Um, <laughs> I was like, crap. Okay, so I posted it, and uh, it got it got huge. Like Denny Wadler was onto it. Like it. <laughs> and they found out it was his brother. So like a follower of a follower of mine's nurse, a follower of mine's girlfriend is a nurse at the Penrith Hospital. And they just saw Cleary come in. It was it was his younger brother that did it at a footy game. So oh, no. I'll check your sources. But yeah, I remember that. That blew up. Um, so yeah, very reluctant to post the Campbell Graham thing. But um, yeah, turns out it was it was pretty good. So that's yeah, 90% of my late mail comes from you, mate. I uh, mm. appreciate it, mate. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks heaps, guys, for joining us. Uh, especially Josh back on his uh, second time. So always good to have you on, mate. Uh, your contribution's always very welcome here. So uh, you're welcome back anytime. Thank you. And, for no, no problem, mate. You're uh, very grateful to have you on. All right, guys. All right. We'll uh, peace out. We'll see you next week. And I hope you get green arrows. I want to win. I want that trophy. I want that trophy. I want that trophy.